Greetings, Adoration family. This is your host, Matt, and I'm doing something that I haven't done for quite some time, which is to have a chat and chew. This is the opportunity that I'm presented with from time to time to be able to bring on people that I care about, that I admire, that I respect, and that have an integrity for the ministry that is beyond reproach. And tonight is no different as I'm presenting two people that are not only dynamic in their ministry, but they just happen to be good people that I'm personal friends with, me and Myra, and they've traveled with us to Rwanda. I'm sure that somewhere in the future we'll travel together again and do ministry work. But tonight, I've been charged to help them share about a special ministry that has been birthed through God's vision through them. And we're going to present that to you tonight. So without further ado, I want to introduce everyone to Pastor Kiefer Bent and his wife, Martha. And they, uh, when they're not doing the ministry work that we're going to talk about tonight, uh, Pastor Kiefer oversees everything at Berwyn Baptist Church in College Park, Maryland. Go out and see him and see the family and see the great work that not only is he doing in the house of worship, but the outreach that the whole family does that extends beyond the church walls into the community. So again, welcome. And, and we're going to be really uh, nonchalant, guys. So uh, we're going to put all our titles away. So welcome, Kiefer, and welcome, Martha. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. It's Thank you, Mac. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Thank you. First of all, I would be uh, not you know, showing good manners if I didn't, first of all, say how much I love you guys, how much I appreciate the time that we've had to uh, spend together to appreciate what you guys do on the mission field and even the way that you've carried yourselves in your own marriage. It, it's just an inspiration for me and Myra, and I know it's also an inspiration for the communities that you serve. And so it's my honor to hang out with you for a little while. And as I told you in prep, just be loose, be free. We're going to have a good time. This is literally a chat and chew. Uh, I would imagine that if we didn't have the cameras rolling, we would probably be breaking bread together and just acting crazy like we always do. And so tonight is no different. So be free. The audience knows who we are. And, uh, you know, sometimes we have to bring a little levity to the ministry experience to let folk know that, yeah, ministry can be challenging, but it can also be really fun. And we can also have a sense of humor and enjoy one another in it. So I'm going to actually act like a professional and just to uh, create an icebreaker question. I want to implore on both of you all to just share for a moment about your Christian experience. And when I say Christian experience, I'm just talking about how you came to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm going to actually dictate the order on how this runs. So ladies first, Martha. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I really am thankful, um, for godly parents. I did grow up in a home, God fearing parents, uh, who love the Lord and they impressed that upon their children, their nine children. And, um, when I was 12, I really did absolutely believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and savior. Um, 
I eventually moved uh, to South Carolina and really and truly, uh, I was in my early 30s, that's really when Jesus became my Lord and Savior of my life. And I wanted uh, to, uh, after I repented and completely turned to him, I wanted to, to commit my life to him. And um, I had the wonderful opportunity, actually around the same time, um, I met this guy here, <laughs> my husband. That guy, who was that my, guy. This guy here. <laughs> and um, I wanted to like, just learn more about the Bible. I was studying it a lot. I was just so hungry for the word of God. I just could not get enough. I was like, you know, seven days a week. I mean, I just need more. And he was like, I need to show you this place. And so he took me to Columbia International uh, uh, Bible College or seminary. And I enrolled there, became a student and um, began to uh, really study the Bible, follow Christ. It was a missional school and loved it and just wanted more and more and more. And so that's, I, I really, uh, that's kind of how, the, that's the short story. But really, m once I knew that I belonged to the Lord, uh, I just wanted to follow Jesus everywhere. And, um, and then obviously, you know, the rest is history, but that's the short story. That's a, that's a, a, a wonderful testimony. And, um, I, I'm so glad that you were open enough to share that with us because, um, here at, at Adoration Chat and Chew, it's all about getting to know the person behind the ministry. And, uh, I'll tell you, I always start these things with getting an understanding of how we got here in the first place. And I'll say this one thing before I, I turn it over to Kiefer, is that uh, you and I are very similar because I was 29 when Jesus became really real to me. And I can tell our audience that from that moment to today, it has been the best, absolutely best decision that I've ever made. And if I hadn't made it, guess what? We wouldn't be here tonight doing this chat and chew with you beautiful people. So there you go. That shows that God is sovereign at all times. Amen. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So Kiefer, it's your turn. Well, unlike Martha, I... I was raised in a home that was not a Christian home. Um, you could probably say we were religious people in one sense, but not necessarily Christian. So um, my parents would send me to church and my siblings would not necessarily attend themselves. So um, church was kind of an odd place for us when we do turn up together. People just look very nervous, like we've never been there before. We all look stiff and all that, but um, true over that course, I got saved during Sunday school. So I came to Christ a lot more earlier than you guys did back like, you know, 18 or 19 year ago when I became a Christian. And for me, it was kind of clear already, like, you know, why would you do this unless you were going to be committed to it? You know, because that was kind of my feel about it. If you're not going to be committed, why bother even, you know, doing this? So once I did that, uh, I remember asking myself in the, while I'm sitting there after baptism saying, where do I go from here? I know I couldn't sing, so that would be out. I couldn't do any creative dancing. I know I can't do that either. <laughs> um, I had no interest in the, um, the deacons or the, the, treasure, the treasurer's position. So eventually, um, my next obvious step was someone recommended that they would show me a Bible college, and that was the first time I saw that. <laughs> that creature, I didn't know that creature existed. Wow. So I got saved. I went there for four years, uh, from there to seminary in Columbia in South Carolina. And things kind of spiraled along that way, kind of pushing me toward the trajectory of um, gospel ministry, mm -hmm. sharing Christ, taking an interest in other people who would need to know Christ and come to know him as not just in terms of knowledge, but in terms of experience as well. So that became very, very clear to me at a very early age, very strong, you know, once I started to 
read the scripture as well because my first task when I became a Christian was that I need to read through this book you know it was in my in my house uh, we saw it about the place but it, nobody actually ever picked it up and read it <laughs> necessarily my mother would read a few Psalm 51 that was her thing you know I think that was her thing but uh, beyond that nobody actually read the book in that sense so that was kind of a new thing in my home to be like a Christian and so um, one thing led to another and mission became a very strong attraction for me as well beautiful so I, I've got a piggyback and I've got to go back to your mom right now I just fell in love with her and I want to tell you why because if there's any passage of the Bible that I would want people to fall in love with Psalm 51 is the one for me because that was also the passage of scripture that brought me to the faith literally <laughs> so so that has a special place in my heart and and um i thank you uh for sharing that because again it's so important for our audience to to understand the diverse pathways that we might take you know me and Martha were on a slower track than than you, but we all get to that place where we realize that Jesus is Savior and Lord, and then it's what we do after we understand that fact that makes all the difference in the world, which is a beautiful segue into the next thing that I want to talk about for a moment, which is now that Martha and Kiefer are together in holy matrimony and also in ministry. What is the purpose for why the two of you all exist to share the word of God? However you want to answer that. You take that one. Oh, well. <laughs> why do we exist? Well, during my um, college years, as I said, the gospel became very clear to me. One of the first things I needed to find out was what exactly is the gospel, how I believe that. Um, it was garbled for me coming to Christ, but somehow the people who shared with me was clear enough. Eventually got it out, and I became a Christian. But it, um, my first thing was like, okay, this thing needs to be very clear so people know what they're making a decision on as well. And so I was pushed in that direction I, by the Lord. You know, we have to make this clear, but not only that, but have a burden for those who have not made that decision yet. Now, along that path, as I was going, in came Martha that I met. And so it seems like a good thing to join forces, you know, you know, to come at this problem from three, three angles, you know, you know, from... Yeah. Me, her, and Christ. It's okay. First. Yeah. <laughs> it's first. You know? Yeah, I like that. Um, you know, my husband, actually, I'm excited to say he really did disciple me because I met him uh, around the time that the Lord really showed me uh, that I belong to him. Uh, and so he discipled me a lot and actually took me on my very first mission trip. And so uh -oh. that was extraordinary uh, to go on my first mission trip with him and really, really see what, as he said, what is this thing that God has us doing together? So that was an exciting time um, as well for me. Very exciting. Yeah. That's great. So, so you know, as I shared in prep, uh, I might go a little bit astray of, some of the things that I said that I would uh, bring up. But just for a moment, if you would share with our audience some of the places that you ended up going outside of the United States. Um, so yeah, so uh, our first mission trip was actually Jamaica uh, together. And then uh, after that, we went to, I guess after that was like local missions, honestly. Uh, we were in local missions in South Carolina together, trying to reach the community okay. near, near the church. Um, and then we went to, I guess, Antigua, 
uh, Antigua. Antigua, sorry, mispronounced that. Uh, in 2006, Jonathan was just born, our son, he was six months okay. old, and we strapped him to our body and <laughs> took him with us, <laughs> six months old on his first mission trip, which was extraordinary. Uh, we were there for uh, two weeks. Maybe two weeks. If you want to see a six year a six month old baby take a <laughs> passport picture, that was it. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um, it's so after that we um, did more local missions uh, in uh, Maryland and lo more local missions and then we ended up partnering with our church uh, and going to India. Um, after that we went to India twice uh the first mission trip to india was was it 20 20 well i we went to india and see uh was it taiwan the philippines we spent a lot of time in asia period. right he ended up a going lot, to china you know, right oh yeah china too china. and then africa quite a bit central uh, um, johannesburg um, right. and then and then latin america so we have we have tapped around the the the, the planet, you know, <laughs> with the, with the full purpose of actually doing and engaging yeah. those that we would want to hear the gospel, who needed to hear the gospel, because that was the objective for us. Okay. So the location was secondary. The passion was really to get the gospel yes. out. Yes, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. And, you know, <clears throat> I wanted to get you guys to flesh out the the different areas of the world that you've traveled in only to acknowledge to our audience now that as much as they have been outside of the United States, both Kiefer and Martha and their son Jonathan have also done some incredible work right in the Maryland area. And just for a moment, talk to our adoration family about the things that you're doing out and about in Maryland. Well, in Maryland, we are, we have kind of followed the, the Acts 1 8 model, which uh, College Park would be our, our little Jerusalem. And um, then we'll move out to, to PG County, which we have done a bit of work in that as well. Um, I'm actually the, the mission director for the PG County Baptist Association. So I, I have to coordinate and sometimes and go to some church and train as well. Um, we also do from Jerusalem, Judea, we have gone to our Samira, which is a feel to the extra part of um, Maryland in terms of Ocean City. That has been a very stable part of our ministry because we have gone there almost every year um, for a, over five, right. no, wow. As long as I can remember yeah, being at I Berwick, we have been, we've been going there as well. <laughs> taking so, teams there. So we have also mobilized taking teams there so that they would actually enjoy that as well to be able to share Christ. It's an open forum. so. It's a little bit of a hot area in mm -hmm. terms of sharing Christ. So that's what we have been doing a lot of in the Maryland area as well. So we're we're familiar with we are familiar by quite a few people who actually have seen us, known us in that area as well, and have actually gone to support us as well. Amen. Amen. So now let's get to the subject that really has us sitting down here today, uh, at least pretending to look professional, <laughs> which is Essential Peace Ministries International. Now, I've got to tell you, and i got to tell my audience, when I first heard that name, I had, I'll call it a righteous jealousy that... <laughs> What a fabulous name, because I understood it as soon as you shared it with me. I understood exactly what it meant. And I was so, let's just say, upset a little bit with the Lord that I didn't get that first. But nevertheless, <laughs> it's beautiful that we can share 
in ministry. And so I'm going to celebrate the fact that if I couldn't have that name, I gave it to you all. But I want you to expound on the vision. What what brought essential peace from the vision stage to the reality stage and anything else that you want to share concerning that process? Right. Do you uh, want to start, honey? Well, essential peace was kind of funny because we were in Bible. I was in Bible college at that time. Um, I think I merely just getting to know Martha and I was going to do a training <clears throat> at the church I was attending and the whole thought about what should be the focus of the training and we went back and forth talking this was way back when we were using like transparencies and projectors back <laughs> oh in the day <laughs> well, this is how old this is you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. and so we That's came funny. up with the, the thought that we should give them what is essential right the essential <laughs> piece and so we played around with the wording for a bit and we played around with the logo for a bit and um then i i remember seeing this this picture of a, a Lego, not a Lego, um, a, a jigsaw puzzle, and there was a pop it out of it. And I said, "That should be the cross. That is the central piece in the world, and so forth." That's how that idea, kind of the short form, how that idea came to us, and we kind of ran with it from there. For a long time, we didn't really do anything that would be organizing it towards the government but we would work with it because that was the name that we were going by until okay. we, we came in contact with um with your ministry and we said hey you know we should probably do this in a way that it would actually um garner the the support and the level that we would want it to be at as well so the name is actually what over 20 it's, years old yeah, it is, <laughs> you know it is. You know, I guess God gave it to us and we didn't move on it. And uh, God being faithful and very good at giving swift kicks, you know, yeah. kind of move yeah. on. You know? so, and in a sense, we did move on it, but we weren't thinking about it in terms of, oh, this could be a, um, this could be what the Lord wants us to really do with this. But we were moving, <laughs> we were moving on it uh, in a sense. So I would say that we were. Uh, a, a little bit. And so I love, you know, people often ask, what does that, what does that mean? And I love how you've been talking about it, but really and truly, you know, like you said, understanding what, what is essential. I mean, during COVID people were saying what they thought was essential. And, you know, we were just here thinking Christ is essential. You know, the word of God is essential. The gospel is essential. Yeah. Uh, and so during COVID, we couldn't, like, you know, everyone knows what happened during COVID. It was just things were just so different. And so we were like, let's, uh, you know, let's go out in our community and even get to know our community more so. And we were meeting our neighbors and passing out Bible tracts as we, everyone was taking walks. And so this really, uh, we wanted the world and still want the world to know from our community to our, as my husband always says, uh, we started in our, you know, of course, trying to make a disciple with Jonathan uh, in our home, our community, literally walking around, getting to know our neighbors, still doing that, um, spending time to, to share the gospel to, um, you know, the community, the city, state, the world. Everyone must know that the good news and Christ is essential. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, well, let me tell you, if we were in a court of law, I would be guilty of plagiarism because I have taken your theme and I'm not lying to you. I have used it so far four times. I've done it on Facebook Live. <laughs> I did it for a congregation yeah. called The Flock in Madison, Virginia. I went over <laughs> to... Um, East North Avenue in Baltimore to New Life Evangelical Baptist Church, and I shared it there. And just on yesterday, a mutual house of worship that we both love dearly, Colonial Baptist Church. They have a seasoned saints uh, uh, ministry every second and fourth uh, Wednesday 
out of the month. And from time to time, I teach uh, those classes. And I was there yesterday sharing it again. And so <laughs> you guys have literally kept me employed over the last month and a half. So I thank God and I thank you both for the beautiful, beautiful vision of essential peace. Now, let, let me ask this. What are you doing within essential peace right now? Wow. So many exciting things are happening. You mean uh, ministerial wise, ministerial wise? Yeah. Can talk a little bit about yeah. that. You want to... Uh, well, before we before we jump on that question, I want to back up and say a little bit because essential, the burden of essential peace really is the burden of the church. Absolutely. We wanted to when people think of mission, we think of mega churches sending out mega bucks and mega people and so forth. And I'm like, you know, the average church in America is about 200 people. Most of them are not that big. They don't have a huge budget. And I want to just go on the record by saying that became our, our desire. And that is to target these smaller churches, you know, maybe have the pastor and one staff member or two. These are the people that we want to target, train, mobilize, and get the, the thing going in that, in that sense. And so that, that's the idea of that, the drive. Okay. You know, um, we're not trying to get the, the church of 200,000. No, don't get me wrong. We'll jump in there and do them too. <laughs> you know, we're not discriminating. But um, we want to mobilize the small church because we, have, we, we can see how you, they can do it even on a low budget and still be able to take the gospel and not be afraid to take the gospel. Well, you, know, you know, we're insignificant. None of us, no church, no believer is insignificant. All of them can do that as well. So I just want to get that in yeah. there to say that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> so with that, uh, interesting enough, Kiefer, because I know that when you were describing uh, the, your pursuit in ministry, you brought up Acts uh, 1-8, and this seems to be just a continuation of the church that I identify with in the book of Acts, in, in the way that you guys are, are focusing. And so that makes this whole endeavor even more exciting uh, for me. And again, when you're talking about essential peace. Um, I've got to tell our audience this. The logo does everything to explain the essential reason why we need to connect with the essential peace and then to learn how to recognize who the essential peace is and what he uses to bring us into this essential experience that we all share together in ministry. And so I'm, I'm totally, totally excited about what you guys have already started uh, and how you'll, you know, address things going forward and what that will mean from uh, expansion point of view but the word on the street is is that there is an event coming up and i want to say that this event is pretty soon but i don't want to spoil the news so i'm going to let you guys announce what's going on with essential peace well, Mac, I want to say just one thing quickly um, okay. about you know what we what you were talking about earlier. Um, you know, a research that we heard, which is I think is formal research, um, but about ninety percent of people are not sharing their faith. Uh, that's that's the data. I don't know if you know um, how old that is exactly, but that is that breaks our heart. 
Uh, there's so many ways to share your faith. Uh, you can share your faith in the grocery store, uh, at the park, at the gas station, uh, in Costco parking lot. Uh, we just go all over our neighborhood. There's so many ways to share your faith. And so that's the other motivation is that, you know, that is when you have the good news, you want everyone to know. And so knowing that we were recently at a church uh, and just sharing about essential peace and someone told us that, you know, we, we're good at, you know, inviting people in, people come to their church, they have a vibrant church. But he says, you know, we're not always good at really sharing the gospel. And so we have the opportunity to go back and, and uh, to spend time with them um, actually again this month. Uh, and so we want, we want to be able to, to help people understand that everyone can share your faith. And so that's, that's really sad, but you know, that's why we're, we're needed. It's urgent. The gospel's urgent. <laughs> so. Amen. 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 It's December the 7th. Um, okay. It's December the 7th from 9 to 12 o'clock at the Mac Church, uh, Mid-Atlantic Community Church uh, in Gamrose. And so we want everyone to come. Uh, if you are interested in coming, uh, please let us know. Uh, we'll get the information to you so that you can understand how to get there. But this is our second annual breakfast. We're really excited um, just to kind of give a report, tell everyone what has been going on with the Essential Peace, and uh, to get everybody excited. Uh, the theme is a call to the mission right? A call to the mission. And so we want everyone to understand that everyone who loves the Lord Jesus can do the mission. They can share Christ. They can right. be on mission, even if it's in their community. Yeah. They, Amen. Uh, they, the, the, the gospel, um, Jesus talked about this, uh, making disciples. And part of that I see is, is a, another way of saying that is mobilization you have to mobilize your community around you. And so essential piece two arm is one is to mobilize, but also to take that mobilization to the field as well. And so mobilization is a big thing. The breakfast is where we try to showcase what we have done, what can be done and the possibility of what can, can be there. Christ so it's Christ doing, doing yeah. in the world. And so to get people to be aware, right. that okay. you can actually do this. I mean, some people we take sometimes they're like, oh, I've never actually shared my faith with anyone before. I said, well, this is an opportunity, you know, just, and we put, we do it in such a way that people sometimes just come to you. I mean, people, when I say that to people, like, people just come to you, I said, yeah, they'll just walk up to you and ask, you know, um, how do I go to heaven? And I said, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. And so we, we do that quite a bit because we have, we've had we're not bragging or anything, but we have a little bit of a experience in doing that and how okay. people really slip into that. And I think we are kind of like a, a guide to guide people into that moment where they can get the chance to share Christ, share their faith with confidence, with no fear. Right. Amen. Matthew 28, uh, 18 through 20 is truly, um, you know, our motivation. We want to obey Christ. Uh, we want to obey his command to take the Great Commission. And so that scripture, uh, in, in, you know, the Logos is there, like Christ. It's all about Christ. But truly, Matthew 28, 18 to th through 20, um, that's what we're following is the Great Commission. Amen. So <clears throat> I'll make a commitment to the both of you that um, I'll make sure that our audience is given all the information for the upcoming event. And as one who partook in the first one, yes. I had a great time. <laughs> so fun. I know that the second time around will be even better than the first. So I'm, I'm excited for you guys. And I, I just for my audience got to be accountable guys. By the time, this breakfast takes place. Yours truly will be in Guatemala. I didn't give the Bents the memo about 
scheduling this thing around my schedule. So I'm going to miss out this time around, but I'm going to try to make the third one. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Thanks. Amen, amen, amen. So, so what I want to uh, just have you guys share with our audience for a moment is, okay, you kind of talked about what essential peace is today, but what do you see essential peace doing? or essential peace looking like in the future? Good question. Um, one of the part of essential peace that is we're still trying to work through, and that is not just the mobilization of taking people and sharing the gospel, but also that we hope to see people branded with us, partnering with us. And I say branded, I mean like, if we can't go to Guatemala, then we can send team members to Guatemala led under the umbrella of essential peace. That's the that's the, the one of the goals we want to see in the future. That essential peace is not just she and us and the few that are with us now, but <laughs> and the board members, but people that are saying, listen, I want to run with this ministry. Right. I want to be able to go, they can represent essential peace there, and that would be our arm moving in different locations, different continents, to get the word out, to get it to, as Christ says, everyone need to hear the gospel. And so that is it. That's kind of like the third arm, you know, going from the local mobilization, but people taking it to a second level. You know what? I like this ministry so much. I understand this ministry so much. I'm okay with the motto, the, the mission statement. I want to run with this. I want to take this as well you know and having the budget to also fund them to do that okay amen amen so after what's that phrase we used to use after we're old and gray <laughs> let not my ability wane in continue to share christ on and on in other words this is a ministry that will go beyond us Oh, I see because I, I feel like I'm I'm at that point now. You know, you say old and gray. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. It, 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 yes, you know. Yesterday, I are different. I went to a conference, and the whole point of the conference is learning how to pass the baton. Yes. Or, yes. How, how you say it here? In the, baton. The, the baton in America. The baton. You know? So they is learning that we want to. We want to be able to pass the baton to many others who will run the race even when we are unable to keep running as, okay. well, as well. So that's one, that's one part of the future. We also see the future where we're actually, and we have already started that as well. We have one project actually getting close to finish, and that is to um, materials that will be unique to essential piece one of the material we're developing is a walk through the bible yeah for churches okay. so that as i we try to tell people i said they we we did a pilot program of this one in in the philippines yeah. where we tried to show people that the bible is not just many stories it's actually one story you know most of the time we spend our time looking at the the the, the trees in the forest and forget that there's actually an entire one big story that goes right. from Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> and so one of the one of the things that Essential Peace has developed, and Martha and I are kind of like working with that, is trying to get people to see the narrative of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because in that narrative, the gospel becomes center focus yes. of why God is doing what he's doing and why he's engaging the way he's engaging. And so we want to do that. We, we already are scheduled to do it for adults and for children. So that's one of the future material we hope that will be on our website, not too far in the future, that people can actually be able to engage with as well. That you can take it, probably go to your church, and show them how to walk to the Bible. Yeah, the progress of redemption, if you will. And it's quite Amen. beautiful when you see the panoramic right, view. Right. Um, right, the progress of redemption. We looked at the the four key blessings in the Bible that God gave his people, um, the fourth one being Christ died on the cross for us and so on. So once you see the panorama of it, um, people are like, wow, I did not know there was actually one story. I thought there was like 
a whole bunch of stories just kind of stringing a pearl together. I said, yes, it may be different pearls, but it is one necklace. Right, with Christ <laughs> being the center and the high point right. and the essential piece. Right, right. We see Christ uh, right there in the center uh, mm -hmm. being, being uh, you know, giving his life for us. Amen. Amen. Jesus at the center of it all. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Here it is. <laughs> you know, so, that, that, so that's that's the future. As you talk about the future questions, yeah. you know, in terms of what we see in the future. So those things are not far into the future. We think they're very close to us. Um, so we are trying to leave. That will be, as you would say, a kind of a legacy for the ministry that we want to see develop from that place. Amen. Amen. Well, you, you know what? Here's the thing. When you're having a good time in fellowship, all of a sudden you look at the time and it's like, have we actually been going this long? And it's amazing when the conversation is fruitful and it definitely has been tonight that we could go on and on and on because, you know, the audience doesn't really understand just how well connected we are. So <laughs> we could talk forever, but I'm going to kind of bring things at least in the direction of closing. But I had to ask this question that was not necessarily in the script, but in your family dynamic, you do have a son. His name is Jonathan. And Jonathan, uh, he's been such a, a blessing in our lives. And uh, I just love it. He just calls me Mr. Mac. And I'm just like, wow, you know. <laughs> like, um, but uh, he's also been essential in what you all have created together. And I just want to give either one of you or both of you time to just talk about your son and just how he's been an active part of the ministry. Like, like you said, he was traveling already in six months. So <laughs> he's been in it basically his entire life. So we do want to give him a little bit of a spotlight before we close things out. I let, I let his mom talk about it. <laughs> well, Jonathan uh, was homeschooled for 17 years by the two of us, and we thank God for allowing that uh, to give us the privilege. And honestly, Mac, I ha hadn't personally seen a child discipled uh, before in that manner, but from the time he was just, you know, in my belly, my husband was reading the Bible to him, and then once he came out, uh, we were just reading the Bible to him daily. And then we allowed him, and a lot of parents don't, you know, they don't realize, and sometimes they do, that you can truly make a disciple or make disciples from inside your home. So we had the privilege of, you know, reading to him the Word of God. And then when he was five years old, obviously he was reading early because we homeschooled. He was reading the Bible himself. So there's a five to nine year old Bible. He was reading this Bible all the time and we were reading it with him. Um, and, you know, he was always on missions with us. He was doing his schoolwork, you know, sometimes on the airplane. Uh, but he just traveled with us, became a big part of the ministry. Uh, when we were in India, he was only, I think, nine. And he came up with this idea to, sh he wanted to demonstrate uh, who Christ was from his Bible, something he saw the attributes of, of the Lord. And he came in our room one day and he was showing us this in his Bible. You know, as God is uh, all powerful and God, you know, he just saw these different attributes in scripture about who God. And so he came, we came up with these posters. Uh, and then when we got to India, he, we put all the kids together and he was holding the microphone and helping them to really talk about who Christ is. And then as he began to grow, um, he was just doing more and more. Uh, he was eventually, we continued to, my husband train him uh, to be able to, um, you know, be able to uh, talk about the Lord, but he trusted Christ when he was nine. 
nine years old. He came to us, made it very clear. I want uh, to know Christ for myself. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. And he was very persistent. And so as he grew and grew, we were able to really uh, read the word of God with him, study scripture. He uh, graduated last year, but he had the privilege to be the speaker. Uh, he shared Matthew 28. Uh, no, he shared uh, Matthew 633 at the Classical Conversations National Commencement last year. He was one of the speakers. And so the Lord has been using him. Uh, he's still using him uh, in Bible college as we speak. And so he's really a big part of the, of the mission work that we've been doing. He's uh, our tech, we affectionately call him our tech person, <laughs> our tech guy. Um, <laughs> but he's, he's just always just willing to do, do anything that is needed for the ministry. And so we're very, very thankful for him, and we give God all the glory. It's nothing we've done. It's all Christ and his goodness, his righteousness. And so to God be the glory. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Now, let's think about this verse for a minute. The main themes that pop out the first time you would read this is first, two things. First, putting God first or before anything else is of the utmost importance. And second, we should not be anxious about anything. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I can tell you from the outside looking in, job well done, job well done. Um, so I know that Martha, you're gonna be the one that I'm gonna have to go to for this next part. So people are gonna wanna know how to connect with essential peace they want to know how they can find out more about the ministry and how they could support it and also give to the different uh things that you have going on so could you share that with our audience now yes yeah, so um our website like some nonprofits, is uh it's there uh and they can definitely see uh, www.essentialpeace.org. Uh, <laughs> I should know this. <laughs> yes, www.essentialpeace.org. And uh, you can see a little bit about uh, us and a little bit about what we've been doing. And then, obviously, we would love it and appreciate it and be ever so grateful for you to partner with us to give. Uh, we will be... Uh, uh, have more out there on Instagram. We do have an Instagram account and uh, a newsletter. And if you want to subscribe, please do that on our website. We'll be very grateful and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more to come. But please pray for us. Pray for Essential Peace Ministries. There's much work to be done. Uh, there's many uh, disciples that the Lord wants us to make, many people to share the gospel with. So please, yes, look for us on online. Uh, www.essentialpeace.org. Uh, and yes, please feel free to, to text us uh, or to, to uh, go on our website and find us. Please subscribe for our newsletter. Uh, and we really look forward to, uh, to hearing from you all, from get, to getting to know you. Now I'm going to throw in one other way of contacting you which is by going to bent, E-P-M-I, at gmail.com. Again, that's bent, B-E-N-T, then E-P-M-I, at gmail.com. I know that they'll be excited to hear from you. Um, guys, look, this has been fabulous, and I've, I've had a wonderful time, uh, but we're getting to this moment where we're going to have to end it, at least for now. I'm sure that this won't be the last time that we get together in this type of forum to talk about other things. And uh, we'll talk off air about how both adoration and also thirst no more corporation can also uh help along with the things going on with uh essential peace but i want to give you guys finally finally before we close out uh just a final thought um whatever 
the Lord has led you to share. Remember, this is ministry that we're doing right now. We don't know who's going to listen to what we've shared tonight. We don't know how. It might be just the thing that they needed in this moment. And so from the passion that you both have in your heart for Christ, for people, please share with them whatever God has put in your heart. Well, the, the challenge that I will leave with your audience, Mac, is um, living, living is easy for most people. We get up, we breathe, we walk. Living well or living a fulfilled life, I think, is takes a little bit more work. You know, um, as one man said, I think, it's not so much that you live, but it's how you will die. <laughs> what will legacy will you leave? Um, I think it was Psalm 90, verse 10, that struck back to me at home where, you know, the Bible talks about we get three score and ten years. And I'll say to your audience, if you have lived 20 years already, then you have 50 years to go. If you have lived 30 years already, then you have 40 years to go. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. The question is, how do you want to spend the remaining portion of your life? Do you want to spend it self-aggrandizing yourself? Or do you want to spend that time pouring it out so that you can serve others? Get people to the gospel get the gospel to people. It's not so much that we live, but we must live well. Not so much we will die, but how we will die, die well. At Essential Peace Ministry, we want to live well, and we want to leave that legacy. It says, we did all that we could do to fulfill the great calling that Christ placed upon us. And that's what I would say to your audience as a challenge. How are you living? What legacy are you living? What are you leaving? Your car, your house, these are not legacies. It's what done for Christ that endures beyond the grave. Amen. Amen. And last but not least, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life in Christ Jesus. The yeah. gospel is urgent, needed. And if you don't know Jesus as your savior, I pray that you will repent and turn to him today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Amen. Nothing more that I can add to that. <laughs> Keeper, Martha, thank you, thank you so much on behalf of the adoration audience this has been awesome tonight um our prayer for you is that you continue to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of god Amen. which is in christ jesus hey look i got a little bit in there somewhere is, is in there somewhere <laughs> um but you know, uh, this this has been just awesome, and and I think our audience can take away some wonderful nuggets from just the example that you guys have set. So, to my audience at Adoration, God bless you, and God keep you in His perfect peace with our minds stayed on Jesus. God bless and good night. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate it.